All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at three practice problems, and we're going to try to determine if these three compounds are acidic, basic, amphoteric, or neutral. And amphoteric basically just means that your compound has both acidic and basic functional groups within the same molecule. All right, and so Let's go ahead and start with this top molecule right here. And what you want to do is you want to look at each individual functional group. And so I'm going to start off with this amine on the left, right? Uh, so this is an aromatic amine because it's directly connected to this benzene ring. And so this aromatic amine we know is going to be basic, all right? So we'll go ahead and label that as basic. And then let's move on to this nitrogen right here because this one's a little tricky. In a previous video, we talked about pyrrole versus pyridine. So go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can identify if this five-membered ring containing nitrogen is a pyrrole nitrogen or a pyridine nitrogen. Okay, so you should have identified this nitrogen as a pyridine nitrogen. So as a result, we know that pyridine nitrogens are basic uh, because the pyrrole nitrogens were the ones that were neutral. So again, if you don't remember, when you have a lone pair on your nitrogen or a nitrogen directly next to a double bond and you're looking at a five-membered ring, so one two, three, four, five-membered ring, and then you'll know that this nitrogen is basic because it's right next to the double bond. In other words, the lone pair is not tied up with the aromaticity of the ring, so it's available to act as a base. That's why pyridine nitrogens are in fact basic. Okay? So that pyridine is basic. And then we can look at this functional group. I'm not sure if we went over this in a previous video, but this functional group is actually called a thioether. So it almost looks like an ether, but instead of having an oxygen in between two alkyl groups, you have a sulfur in between two alkyl groups. Okay. So thioethers are actually neutral. So you don't have to worry about that one. Um, contributing to either acidity or basicity. This one's just neutral. And now there's one more functional group in the middle. So I'm going to do this in red because I kind of want to highlight something important. So this functional group you might think, oh that's a sulfonamide, that's acidic, and let's move on. But you want to be careful because what we see right here is we see a negative charge. So that negative charge tells me that this is not the UA form of your sulfonamide. So in other words, if you would have had an SO2 attached to a nitrogen, and then it had a hydrogen attached to it, and then it had some stuff attached to it, it doesn't really matter, right? So then we could say that this is a sulfonamide, and we would call this the UA form. But what's actually drawn here is the IB form, because what happened is, a base deprotonated this hydrogen, uh, therefore adding a lone pair. Okay, so you could see that additional lone pair, which puts that negative charge on the nitrogen. And then again, stuff attached. And so this is actually the IB form or the basic form. Okay, and so overall, we would call this IB form. Um, basic. So you want to really be careful with what form you're looking at. So yes, a sulfonamide is, we learned it as an acidic functional group, but right now we're looking at its ionized base form, its negative charge, its uh, form that is negatively charged, and therefore it's going to be basic. So I could label this as basic. All right. Now let's move on to this next structure. So this next structure is a lot simpler because I'm looking at it and right away I see a ketone. 
Okay, and we know that ketones are neutral. And I also see an amide. You might be tempted to call this an amine, but since it's directly bonded to a carbonyl, we call it an amide. And we know that amides are also neutral. So we had a ketone, which is neutral. And we had an amide, which is neutral. So overall, the structure is going to be neutral. All right, now let's look at this third structure. So this third structure has two different functional groups. One is this functional group right here, which we know is an ester. And if you recall from previous videos, esters are neutral. They aren't proton donors or proton acceptors. They're just neutral. Okay. And we also see a nitrogen here. It's not next to a carbonyl, so I know it's an amine. And now I have to determine if it's an aliphatic amine or an aromatic amine. So if you notice, the aromatic ring is very far away from that amine. So we can't call it an aromatic amine because it's not directly bonded to the nitrogen. Instead, we'll call it an aliphatic amine. And remember, aliphatic amines, you can think of them as aliphatic amines are fat or big. And so that's how you would remember that aliphatic amines tend to have or do have that higher pKa of 8 to 10. As a side note, the question wasn't asking about that. So this aliphatic amine, we know, um, is usually basic. Right? Or, so when we see an aliphatic amine, it's basic. But I want you to notice that positive charge there. So if I redraw this uh, part of the structure where the nitrogen is, because that's the part that I'm interested in. Okay. So if instead of that positive charge there, if instead I remove that positive charge, by deprotonating it. So let's say that proton was deprotonated and in its place as a result of being deprotonated there was a lone pair. So in this form this is an unionized base aka your aliphatic amine that you're used to. But the form that's actually drawn in our structure is the protonated form. So it's the form that actually grabbed a proton. So let's zoom in on what that means. And so this nitrogen picked up this proton and then this bond broke and the electrons went on to the conjugate base there. Then what would happen is we would get the al the aliphatic amine, we would get the other form of it. So we would get the Ia form, okay? So this part with the curved arrows, it's not as important to, you know, be able to draw your own curved arrows. It's more important to recognize the different forms. So with that additional proton right there, we know that this nitrogen is now positively charged. And so as a result, this will be the ionized acid form. Okay, because remember, bases could be neutral or they could be positive. So as drawn, you might be tempted to label that nitrogen, that aliphatic-looking amine, as basic. But actually, it's going to be acidic. The reason it's going to be acidic is because it's an aliphatic amine that is in its Ia form. It's already grabbed a proton and therefore is now a proton donor rather than a proton acceptor. And that has to do with this acid-base reaction um, drawn right here. And so most people would be tempted to call number three or to answer number three as a base, but actually number three is acidic. Okay. So just to kind of uh, highlight some key points, so let's zoom in on that first structure. So the first structure we said right away had a basic portion and that was this aliphatic 
I mean, excuse me, an aromatic amine because it's directly bonded to that aromatic ring, and we said that was basic. Then we looked at the sulfonamide and we said, oh, we were tempted to call that an acid, but because it is in its IV form and it is deprotonated, we actually call it basic. And then finally we looked at this nitrogen here and we said, okay, well, when we see a nitrogen right next to a double bond, that reminds us that it is a pyridine nitrogen and pyridine nitrogens are basic as opposed to a pyrrole nitrogen. And so overall, we, th we see three basic components, and so that's going to be a basic overall compound. Now let's look at the second one. So the second one is going to be uh, a lot easier because we see a ketone, which we know is neutral. It's neither an acid nor a base. And we see an amide, which we also know is neutral. So if you accidentally called this an amine by only paying attention to the nitrogen hydrogen, the nitrogen hydrogen bond and you didn't really pay attention to this carbonyl you would think it's a mean and maybe you would call it a base so make sure you're really looking at these structures holistically and lastly we looked at this one and we recognize that there's an ester which is neutral and then we recognize that this nitrogen, oh, that looks like an aliphatic amine. Uh, the aromatic ring is far away, but then we had to be careful because we noticed it was in its protonated form, which means that it's actually in its IA form. It has already grabbed a proton. If it had been in this top form without that positive charge, we would have called number three basic. But because it was in this bottom form here, this IA form, we had to call the overall structure acidic because it has already accepted a proton, so now functionally it's a proton donor, not a proton acceptor. All right, so I want you to go ahead and look at number one, two, and three and try to think of how you can make these structures amphoteric. So for example, for number two, maybe you can add on your own functional group somewhere and you can add on an acidic functional group or a basic functional group and then you would classify this as, let's say if you added an acidic and a basic functional group, you would classify it as amphoteric, right? Or if you look at number one, it's basic, but then let's say you took that middle functional group here that I'm going to highlight in blue that we knew uh, comes from the sulfonamide UA form but is actually in its IB form. Well, what if you redrew the structure and you added on a hydrogen to take away that negative charge? So then you drew it in this top form instead. Well, in that case, it would be amphoteric because you would have some basic functional groups and you would also have a functional group in the middle if you draw it, rewrite it in its UA form, redraw it in its UA form, then it would be amphoteric. Okay, so this is just kind of going beyond these problems, seeing if you can create your own structures uh, that would be amphoteric because by definition amphoteric means that the compound includes both acidic and basic functional groups.